Welcome to tonight's show. We're excited about our next guest, Mr. Nick Hall. He's a very well-known and up-and-coming evangelist. He's held crusades for young people and adults as well all over the world. In fact, I looked at his preaching schedule. And I'm like, that's awesome. I mean, that, that's really good. He was the keynote speaker at the at the uh, NRB, and uh, we we're, we're very blessed to get him. It was a last-minute interview that we put together. And like I said, God, in the last segment, God lifts you up. God, God promotes you if you let him promote you. If you go and promote yourself, well, you're going to get what you promote. But if you let God promote you, well, you're going to get what God has for you. And he was a great interview, very down to earth. And he was, again, was a keynote speaker. What that means is he was one of the main guests that were going to be speaking at the NRB opening ceremonies. And he did a really good job. We're going to talk again about faith. We're going to talk again about how God does healing and stuff like that at the end of the segment. But for right now, let's take, go to Nick Hall. Welcome back to the show. We're still here at the NRB, and I have a very special special guest with us. We got this one scheduled, and I was excited about that, Mr. Nick Hall. Good to meet you, David. Good, good to meet you. A keynote speaker here at the NRB, correct? That's right. Wow, that's that's such an honor. It is an honor. You know, I uh, I don't know if they knew what they were doing when they asked <laughs> me, but I'm, uh, I was grateful to be here. And uh, it's been a lot of fun, you know, getting to meet people and uh, just getting to be a part of this great event. That's something when you get that call, you're like, okay, yeah, sure, yes. <laughs> you don't even <laughs> think about it. You're like, yes, I'm in. <laughs> there you go. That's right. Amen. So t tell us about what you're involved in right now. Pulse, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I lead up a movement called Pulse. It started as an English paper I wrote when I was in university. Okay. Uh, basically, I was just a student amongst uh, a lot of kids that needed Jesus. And it was our heart to see Christian ministries come together around the call of Christ prayer, unity, uh, large events, students, evangelism, and uh, it really just unleashed a move of God. Amen. I mean, and so we saw the largest student-led initiative that America has seen in decades happen uh, when I was a junior and senior. We had 8,000 students come out, 1,200 kids come to know Christ on our campus, and uh, really it just spread across the state, spread across the upper Midwest, and now it's going from coast to coast. I mean, we're just seeing young people with just a hunger and passion for God. Amen. And uh, so we're just trying to keep up with it. You know, we travel. We're part of about 200 events a year, speaking to about a million students <laughs> wow. every year. Yeah, that's so amazing. 200 events. That's a lot of travel. Keeps us running <laughs> for sure. So how many people are involved in Pulse? We have a team of 17 people. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, there's an army of people that are organizing events, doing administrative work, uh, doing discipleship, working online. And then there's a, a few of us that go out and speak at different events, but then we also have a team of uh, communicators that we also partner with nationally. Yeah. It takes a team. When you move, have a movement that's really strong, it takes a team. I think Billy Graham had 3,000 people that were volunteers. That's right. 3,000 people to do the big crusades that he was Absolutely. doing. They'd go ahead of him in the city. I'm sure that's what they're yeah, doing with we, you. Yeah, have, we have thousands of volunteers every year. That's Absolutely. amazing. But, you know, it's a, I really believe that this, this next wave of Move for God, it's a corporate event. Totally. It, it's not just an individual. It's a corporate move. It's a corporate Absolutely. spirit that's there. People coming together. One may be a pastor, but that today he's part of this or pulse and helping you where he can. I think that's where hmm. it's needed. It, Absolutely, and it's it's amazing to see the, the millions of kids hmm. that that hmm. you're reaching and stuff. What's the demographics, the age groups? You know, most of our events are uh, university, uh, high school, um, young adults. So I'd say somewhere between that 15 to 29 window is really okay. what we'd say our sweet spot. And uh, man, we're just reaching after this generation. We're going after it, and I think you hit the nail on the hard head when you talked about. Uh, what God's doing is calling movements together, ministries together. Absolutely. Actually, we're uh, working on right now a joint effort with ministries nationwide called Reset. Okay. And uh, we're really laying aside our Pulse uh, initiatives. Not that we're not still called to do it, not that we're not going after it. But we just believe that God wants to do something bigger uh, than any one ministry in one church. Okay. And so we're trying to pull as many groups together as possible for a three-year effort uh, to blanket America and the youth of our nation specifically with the gospel. So oh, it's a movement amazing. of prayer, worship, unity, evangelism. We want to have it culminate uh, with a generation-defining mm -hmm. moment 
We're, we're dreaming of the largest uh, spiritual gathering in America's history is what we're praying for. Amen. So you can be praying with us. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll be praying with spread you. Spread the news, yeah, I, you know, if you're watching. I will watching. cover it. You know, I will cover it. Yeah. Just let me know how. When we'll, we'll figure out a yeah. way. Well, ResetMovement.com is a website. Okay. We're doing 30 cities this fall, just okay. kicking it off. And uh, coming really, to Texas? We're going to be in Texas? I'm in Houston. So. Okay. Well, it depends where you're at. I can go anywhere from there. All right. Sounds <laughs> Please good. cover one of them for you. Yeah, Texas is kind of a big yeah. state, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I believe in sowing. You, you sow, you're going to reap. That's right. If you, if you continue to be a blessing, God's going to bless you. That's right. And, and it's an important thing that a lot of ministries, and I love it that you're doing this, and the corporate anointing is this, that people are having to get out of their comfort zone. Totally. And people are going to have to understand that it's God's church. It's God's Absolutely. ministry. It's Absolutely. not your ministry. It's Absolutely. God's ministry. Absolutely. And when they, when they work with other people, yep. that helps reveal that even more. For sure. And For it's sure. amazing. So tell us about the nun generation the nun generation yeah the nun. oh before. the term nun what does it mean in, in the when they don't have any beliefs any ideas yeah that's a, that's a great question i mean obviously there's recent uh, study survey that went out that uh, the fastest growing religious movement in america today is those without religion i'm sure you saw that yeah yeah and uh you know so obviously uh, our christian kids are losing their faith uh the majority of kids aren't having faith uh, so it's just a really interesting time. Yeah. I mean, these kids are... How do you reach those kids? They, I mean, they really they already made up their mind. There's no faith. They already they're made up their mind. There's no God. They already made up their mind. I don't want to go to church. How yeah. do you reach them? You know, I don't know that they've really made up their mind. Uh, I think it's just uh, there aren't a lot of voices in their life okay. that are embodying faith and spirituality and Christianity. Uh, you know, for them, uh, I think Christianity is a... It's a group of people that is political, or it's a group of people that stands for certain social okay. issues. You know, so for a generation that is trying to be accepting of all walks of life, the last thing you want to uh, uh, put yourself into is a group that is, oh, those are the group that's against those people. You know, yeah. so that's kind of, the, there's a little bit of a public relations problem for okay. the church with the next generation. So for us, uh, we come together, we're bringing together the body of Christ, and uh, we're doing large-scale campaigns, trying to repaint Jesus to a generation. Amen. That's good. That's you know, good. so we want to lift up Jesus. We want to talk about what it means to have a, a relationship with him. We're talking about, uh, say this isn't about religion. This is about a spiritual experience. Okay. Like we find there's a lot of interest, young people, spirituality. I mean, you, you find people are experimenting. They're, yeah. They're wanting to know God. And you know, you're doing it the right way. Because when I go out to missions and I, and I work in Kenya, I work in India, especially India is where I have a bigger reach in there. And, you know, I can't explain to them what I'm feeling. I can't explain to totally. them. I trust God. That's right. I just go out there, I present the word in the most loving and most respectable way I can, yep. and I just let God do the rest. And totally. that's, what, that's what you're doing. Absolutely. You know, if you go to India and you start talking against everything that is culturally normal for them, they're going to shut the doors oh, before absolutely. you even get there. Absolutely. You know, but you're coming there and you're preaching Christ, Him crucified. And I think that's the thing for the church in America. Um, we've let uh, a lot of other issues become the main thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we've moved away from just the centrality of yeah. of God's love and the message of the gospel and the open arms that we the church should have for all people from all backgrounds. Say, come in, we love you. You're not going to get judged here, man. We want to we want to hang out with you. We want to get to know you. We want to be there for you. Amen. Amen. I mean, that's the context where you know true discipleship can happen, where people can really come to Christ. You know, the process of sanctification can begin to take root. That's what we're praying for. You know, Amen. and we're yeah. asking for that that reset, as yeah. we're saying. I mean, you know, I had a Wallace Henley on my show um, a few few months back, and he's the, the, the pastor of Second Baptist's Bible teaching, and Dr. Ed Young. And Dr. Ed Young told him, I don't care what music you have, I don't care what what praise and worship, what kids program, if the Spirit of God is not in this thing, hmm. uh, it's not going to change anything. Totally. It, it just defeats the whole purpose of being Absolutely. here. And I, I see that in your heart, that you want God to move. What are some of the things that this millennial generation are going through? What, what are things that the kids are, are having to face with? Things that probably, I mean, I'm definitely older than you but totally. I didn't have to go through that stuff what, what are some of the things that we don't know that we yeah may know? <clears throat> you know I mean I think a huge thing has to do with just the the media inundation you know, the average teenager in America has 48 hours of media intake every week uh, that's more than most of them are sleeping you know okay. <laughs> and uh, so they're being connected and they're being told what to look like and how to act and what it means to be happy and I mean these are the messages that are shaping them so you can imagine that they're growing up uh, they're addicted to things like pornography Mm -hmm. uh, they're addicted to different substance abuse. Uh, Self-harm is a raging cutting. epidemic. Yeah. Um, cutting, anorexia, bulimia, wow. um, all kinds of just self-mutilation. There's an inward pain they feel. Uh, most times I find it's, uh, it's an outward manifestation of what they've felt internally for, their, for a long time. 
Um, they haven't had adults in their life that are speaking into their life. You know, a lot of them are single parent homes and mom or dad that is around is working all the time. Uh, so they don't have any good role models or examples that are there for them every day. Uh, so there's just a lot of deep pain and a relational void. You know, so for these kids, uh, they're trying to feel and fill the void that every other generation has gone through before. You, know, you think of like the Rolling Stones, yeah. I can't get no satisfaction, mm -hmm. right? I mean, so it's the same thing today. It's just everything is accelerated. Yeah. You know, you say true. today you have a nine-year-old kid, you know, looking at pornography. Mm -hmm. You got middle school kids talking about sex and yeah. sexting and all these things that are like, man, what the heck? These kids are, yeah. too, you know, you, every generation says these kids are growing up too fast. Well, for this generation, like, they're really growing up too fast. Oh, wow. That's amazing. We got about a minute left. I want you to talk to us about Winter Jam. Absolutely. Tell us what that is. And you know, we're out on a ma massive tour. Uh, it's the largest tour in the world, okay. actually. Uh, we're uh, sharing the gospel every night, 10 bands, and wow. I get up in the middle of the night and I share the gospel. Okay. Um, already this year, we've been in front of about 350,000 young people. We've seen over 100,000 respond to the gospel. So, it's, I mean, it's really a modern-day move of God. We believe that God is bringing about a supernatural reset in our time, in our day. It's not about any ministry. It's okay. not about any band. It's not about any denomination. We believe this is a Spirit of God thing. He wants to move. And, uh, man, we're just trying to pull as many believers together to say, man, God wants it. Let's go after Jesus. The time's now. Let's link arms, lift up each other, go after this thing. Nick Hall, you are a very encouraging man. You too. <laughs> God Appreciate you. it. Thank Thanks you. for being on the show. And we'll be back with another great guest. Welcome back to the show. I just want to let you know that Nick Hall was an amazing young man. Didn't know how great he was going to be received out there and what we're doing and how we're doing things. But he, he was a blessing. He just he just did awesome things and, and talked about some great things. And one thing that really struck my, my heart and really, really made me know he was a good guy is when he just mentioned about wanting to be able to talk their language, wanting to be able to reach them within their own reachable circumstances. You can't go into a nation and start start damning the place up and <laughs> start saying, thus saith the Lord because of this. No, one thing I liked about what Nick said was this, and, and that was, that you just you have to be able to not offend them, not not make them feel like they're going to want to reject the gospel because you're being offensive to them. And I got to tell you a story about when one minister we took to India one time back in the 90s when I was helping another ministry and I was part of their mission ministry um, group that we would gather pastors to send overseas to work in the in the with the big crusades and stuff. And he, and he went to stage and, and it's no, not normal that we allow ministers to preach in the open crusades that do not have a missionary visa. Most of these pastors go over with visitors' visas, and it's an open crusade. And he took the American dollar bill, and he said, do you see this dollar bill? And I don't have a dollar bill. I mean, I have a debit card. But he goes, do you see this dollar bill? It says, in God we trust. And everybody just staying quiet, listening to him. And he pulls out the rupee. He says, do you see in your rupee, you have false idols and demonic stuff and witchcraft. That is why your nation is so cursed and broken. He goes, because you don't have a dollar, you don't have in God we trust, a faith nation. Well, you, do you think that reached anyone? They didn't even understand what he's talking about. They have a million gods in India. Which God in which we trust? So you got, you got to be able to develop the, the reason we follow Jesus, the reason we follow God the ancient of one, Jehovah Jireh. You have to be able to, to do that. And so when you go in the way Nick goes into places and ministers and how he's helping teenagers that are, that are cutting themselves, uh, teenagers that, that are just really out there looking for someone to just talk to and, and need to be reached, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing what he does. Uh, pull up that scripture, Luke 8, uh, 40, if you don't mind uh, what we have there. I want to read you this scripture real quick. And it says on this scripture, And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him amen they gladly received him now let's say they gladly received him you know that is the kind of mark that we need to have we, we don't need to go into a place and, and when we leave they, they want to cast us out and send us out they want to beat us they want to stone us no when when i go back to india every single time no matter which village i go to that i visited before they gladly receive me. Why? Because I've adapted myself to, to their life and I've, I've given them my heart and have not been offensive. I have been able to work with. I've been a person that just wants to see how God can move in their ministry. I never go in saying I know more than them. I never go in there saying that they don't know what they're talking about. I never say I'm more educated to them. I just preach the word. 
And Jesus did the same thing. He didn't go and say, I'm the son of God and I know everything. I, my father is the heavenly father. I am the Allah. Of life. No, he went in and was a blessing. He loved people. He received who, who was broken from children all the way to adults. He went into the ones that were cast away in the highways and the byways. He was a, a brother. He loved them. And that's how we need to be received. That's how when we know we're doing the work of God, is when we go back to a place that we visited before and they receive us gladly. John Olsen used to say, go where you're received and not tolerated. And, and, and that way you will know that you're in the will of God. I don't know how much more I can tell you. If you're a minister, if you're an evangelist, it's great to preach. It's great to get out there. It's great to do the work of God. But see who you're reaching and see who else you can reach if you just adapt yourself and be more of a blessing than an offensive approach to people. Anyway, we're going to be right back. Um, Nick Hall has a promo. We're going to play that and some more videos. God bless. We'll be right back. Cry for mercy. Even in the New Testament, we see many people crying out saying, Jesus, would you have mercy on me? I'm a sinner. Listen, it's not about being religious. That's not what this is about. Listen, just because you step into church, that doesn't make you a Christian. I mean, you don't step into Burger King and say, now I'm a whopper. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Listen, what makes you a Christian is if you have looked at your sin and you've realized I'm on the wrong path and you've said, I've messed up and you come to God and say, God, I apologize. I ask for your forgiveness and you put your trust in Jesus. We see something unleashed in this. It's almost just like what Jesus says, Father, make them one. Them, just like I am in you and you are in me, Father, that they would be one, that they may have our, your glory, that they may know your love, and that the world may believe. And God started a movement in the early church that impacted their known world. Chapter by chapter, it's the ESPN plays of the week, thousands of people coming to Christ, repenting, turning, saying, who are these people? They're different. Acts 17, they say, these people who have turned the world upside down have come here also. Can you imagine that? See, what they didn't know is that they were turning the world right side up. And I'm telling you, when we come together under the throne of Jesus Christ, under the message of the gospel, we're going to turn the world upside down. The most important thing in my life is Jesus Christ. You see, nothing satisfies, and I want to tell you, there's a reason why you can't find satisfaction from any of these things. There's a reason why you have gone from thing to thing, relationship to relationship, high to high, and you have never found what you're looking for. The reason is this. God, He created you to know Him. He created you to only be satisfied by Him. Cheerleading can exploit young girls, especially when their uniforms are more suitable for a brothel than a ball field. I'm Dr. Katherine Albrecht, and I'll be back in a moment to tell you about one high school squad that wants a little more respect. Your search engine is watching you, recording all your searches and creating a massive database of your personal information. That's creepy, but it doesn't have to be that way. Startpage.com is the world's most private search engine. Startpage doesn't store your IP address, make a record of your searches, or use tracking cookies. And they're third-party certified. If you don't like Big Brother spying on you, start over with Startpage. Great search results and total privacy. Startpage.com, the world's most private search engine. Cheerleading has always been sexist. Cute girls turning cartwheels in support of buff male athletes is a time-worn tradition. But many uniforms put the emphasis more on titillation than teamwork, and some cheerleaders are demanding more respect. A Connecticut high school squad recently got up the nerve to ask for more cover.
Has anything ever happened in your life that didn't make sense? Do you find yourself doubting or wondering, stuck in a valley of hurt because you don't understand? Do you have questions? Then this book, Why God Why by Karen Jensen, is the answer for you. It's all about asking God your toughest questions, then putting them on the back burner so you can move on and live life to the fullest. Well, it was New Year's Day, 1997. My husband, who was a pastor, went to bed before me, and by the time I got there, I realized he, he wasn't breathing. I, I called 911, but they were never able to revive him. And so you can imagine, I found myself at 37 years old, a widow with 12 and 13 year old sons and having to run our church by myself, I had questions. And you know what I found out is that God is so faithful and my family and I have come out on top and we're so grateful to God. But that's why I've written this book because I meet people who have had things happen to them and they don't understand. And I, I want to tell them, you can ask all the tough questions you want. God is your Father and He loves you. But then how to put those questions on the back burner and move forward with your life. We don't want to stay in the land of why forever or life will pass us by. I want to help people reclaim their life and move on to their bright future. Welcome back to the show. And uh, we had a little issue with one of our videos. I guess the Lord don't want cheerleaders on our, our platform. Who knows? <laughs> but either way, we're back and we're excited um, to see what God is doing here. Um, it's, it's amazing to see what the Lord has is, is put together and all the things. And, and I really think this, is, this has become more of an evangelistic ministry on preaching on TV I don't think I get into anything too deep to where you sit there and you listen and you say, wow, this is amazing. No, I, I pretty much try and hit you at your heart and, and challenge you to do something for the Lord, challenge you to, to make yourself available to Him. You know, there's so many of us that don't realize how much more people we can reach, how many people that we can minister to. Uh, testimony I shared, just, just a couple of episodes. Maybe well, actually our first two episodes was with Mike uh, Renteria and with George Vargas. And do you know that you were built to inspire people? That's very true. You were built to inspire people and inspire them to do more for the Lord. Uh, I, I go to different churches every single year. I don't go to as often as I would like to go to, but I try and create new relationships and go there with my magazine. I think I may have my magazine here. I know it's not loaded in the system, but yes, I do have my magazine right here. And I, I will take this magazine. Let's get the desk cam going here. See if we can get a good shot of this. And um, there's the magazine. That's my magazine. And, and when we go to that magazine, I, I would go over there and I would show the people with this magazine every single thing that we do. And there's se several different things. Rev Media Publishing in here. There's Rev Media Network. There's Rev Media uh, Revelation Ministries and David Yannis Ministry stuff. Well, it's all been reconfigured and remade now. This is the, the older one. The same colors and stuff, but just a little bit different information. And what I do with that magazine, I, was, I would go into different churches, go in there and uh, see where I can be a blessing. I just came back from Revival House uh, maybe about a month ago, went over there and sat there streaming up. And how I met Pastor Bruce out there was just seeing what we had, what he needed to us to help him on. 
And when I showed him the Rev Media Network streaming, he goes, Brother David, I need streaming. But did you know that just a few months earlier, before I met him and became a good friend of his, that he, he just got his book published, and I could have helped him on that as well. So I have published in, we have broadcast in, I have David Yanna's ministries, which is our healing ministry and our traveling ministry. And all these things, you just don't know who you're going to bless and who you're going to inspire. Uh, back to Pastor Mike and George. When I went to go visit them, I, I showed them different things, showed them different streaming, didn't know where we were going to end up. And do you know that they were the first two ministers that I inspired to go on a mission trip and go to India? They'd never been on a mission trip to India, never been to Africa, inspired them. They jumped up. They were excited about it. Uh, our, our relationship, we didn't even know that's where it was leading. We're just, we're good just good meeting each other, good getting to know someone, getting, getting to talk with people. I really challenge you on this one thing. If I can encourage you on this, work with people that are like-minded. Like-minded people make it so much easier. Uh, the expectation is there for what you expect. Uh, your motivations are the same. The actions that you do may be the same as well. Uh, Mike, Pastor Mike, uh, Bishop Mike, I should say, Bishop Mike Renteria is a prophet. He's, a, he's also a bishop, so he has several churches underneath him. But he, he, is, he's, he has a prophetic gift. And then uh, Pastor George has a prophetic gift as well. And, and I work in the healing ministry. Healing gift is, is what God's blessed me with. And I tell you, uh, we learn to work with each other, learn to work with some of the same gifts. When we're out there ministering, I would minister, and I would get some of their gifts, and I would speak over people. And they would get some of my gift, and, and a lot of it, there would get a lot of my gift, and they would be praying over people that they would get healed. Not to say that they weren't healing and praying for people that people were getting healed before, but they were obviously walking in my anointing. They all said that they could see the anointing they were walking in. And, and you know, that, that's a good thing. It's a good thing when you, when you have that. But you need to work with like-minded people. You need to inspire people. You never know who you can inspire. I didn't know I was going to inspire Pastor George and, and Pastor Mike to jump on a plane with me and fly off to India and, and, and Africa, and it went well. And I was glad it went well because I, I was introducing them to my work that I've been doing for several years. So, and, and not only that, but now we have an annual trip. We go and sometimes semi-annual because I'll be, I will be back in Nairobi with Pastor Mike and this August, so please help support that trip. You can always email me, David at Rev Media Network, for details, or you can go on our website. And, and go ahead and put our website up there, and you can go up there and you can see how you can email us. Also, our address, if you can, you can send us a gift as well to do the great work. So I want you to pray with us. I want you to believe in us, but believe in what we're doing and see how God is doing. Hey, we're getting gifts all the way from the U.K. They're blessing us. I, I don't know how they're hearing what they're doing, but I know God is doing awesome things. Uh, but we'll see you next time on The Midwatch. Thank you so much for being a part of our broadcast and just, just being faithful to be a, be a viewer and to take some of the teaching that we have and be a blessing with it. God bless you. We'll see you next time on The Midwatch. The views and opinions of our guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of this station, this show, or its host.